Today we're looking at headlands and bays. What are they and how do they form? Now, if you have a look at this image, it's got pieces of rock that are sticking out into the sea like that one and like that one and like this one in the foreground. And it's got places where the coastline curves inwards. Well, they are the headlands and bays. Headlands are those areas of rock that extend out into the sea and the bays are the areas of coast that curve inwards. So we know what they are, how do they form? Here is an image and this area here is the land and this area here is the sea. Um, imagine we've got a band of hard rock here that could be chalk or limestone and likewise chalk or limestone here. And in the middle there's a band of soft rock that could be sand or clay. So, in come the waves. Now the waves come in from the sea and will be repeatedly crashing into this coastline. Um, they will be doing erosion through the processes of hydraulic action and abrasion and this coastline will be getting worn away. Over time, the softer rock will erode away quicker than the harder rock. And already here, after a few years, you can see an indentation uh, within the land. If we come back in a few years time, because of repeated hydraulic action and abrasion, the soft rock has eroded away quicker than the areas of hard rock. And already we can see a headland here, a headland here and the bay between. So come back in even more years, uh, the soft rock has been eroded away. Here there is a beach um, and you've got the prominent bit of hard rock sticking out here, prominent bit of hard rock sticking out here. And so there you have it. Our two headlands have been formed. Between them, um, there is a bay. Now, if we look at the land here, you've got an even area of coastline that is all hard rock. And if it's the same kind of rock making up the headland, we call it a concordant coastline. If we look at this area of coastline here, it's uneven because it's hard rock that stick, sticks out and then soft rock that curves inwards, hard rock that sticks out. If the rock types are different, causing headlands and bays, we call it a discordant coastline. Now, here is an example of such a coastline. And we're going to go down south within England. We're going to go to Dorset and we're going to be looking at the area around Swanage Bay. So Swanage Bay is in Dorset and it's got two headlands, Ballard Point and Dulston Head to either side. And then this picture is from the GCSE Bite Size website. Um, here is our harder rock, which is um, chalk. And then here's another area of harder rock, which is limestone. In between, there are soft, clay, soft clays and sands. So if we have a look, here is our headland ballard point sticking out. Swanage Bay is within the middle. And then you've got Dilston Head, which is our other area of hard rock, our um, headland sticking out into the sea. Now, imagine you're asked during a GCSE um, to explain the formation of headlands and bays. Um, you want to get these. Um, specific words into your answer. So all the words in bold are the ones that would help you to get full marks. Where a coastline is discordant, has alternating bands of harder and softer rocks. The softer rocks, such as clay, will erode away quicker through the processes of hydraulic action and abrasion. This leaves the harder rocks, such as chalk, sticking out as headlands, e.g. Ballard Point in Dorset, and areas of softer rocks curve inwards leaving bays, e.g. Swanage Bay in Dorset. If you wrote this sort of answer, it will get you full marks.